hey, we need to talk such and such thing and, and get it get it out and get it over with. Definitely get it out. Don't, yeah, don't uh, mm-hmm. uh, call it a feeling. When did this turn into a relationship thing? <laughs> Back to music. <laughs> Welcome. So, <laughs> yes. Hi. I'm well, Dr. Well, Fraser Crane. Welcome to this old marriage. <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and this guy. My guest today is a singer-songwriter and music director for SOS Radio. Uh, he's a member of Vegas cover band Pobody's Nerfic. Say that three times fast. <laughs> and uh, I met him, actually, at the Homegrown Songwriter Showcase run by Hal Sabar. I believe I met you at the Strat. Yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Yes, which is, unfortunately, that's not there anymore at time of recording, but things are happening. Uh, he's played all types of venues, from pizza place to sandwich shop to rooftop stage to casino lounge. Uh, self-described as husband, dad, music director, coffee snob, and a comic book nerd. Please welcome to the channel, Chalmer Harper. Say hi. Thank you. Hello. Thanks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, I like all that thing, uh, but but the uh, talk to me about SOS Radio. Okay, sure. It is a non-commercial uh, contemporary Christian radio station. And I've been in Christian radio for about 20 years now. Okay. And I started, I actually started in college um, just, just by way of a friend who said, this kid needs to be on. And so give him a show. And so they gave me a show on my college radio station. You've got a good face for radio, <laughs> Yeah, <kid>. exactly right. <laughs> so that's it. You know, I've been living by that moniker all my life. So, uh, so I jumped behind the microphone and just really felt like there was something there and, uh, never left. Nice. Um, do you think, do you get to play your own music occasionally? No, 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 none of, none of my own. It's all, all nationally signed labels. Yeah. Now there are some indies that have made it on the station. Um, and that's part of my job is to determine whether or not the indies get to get to beat out the, the big, the big wigs. They don't have a, a like a homegrown show or version. No, of... no, nothing, nothing now. Um, now nice. years ago, years ago, mm-hmm. there was, there was an opportunity to do that, um, mm. in, in the radio scene. Um, but that's kind of dropped off, um, over the past uh, decade, decade and a half. Right on. Well, before we get into some other questions I've dug up on you or, or, or you know, <laughs> creative you, I wanted to, number one, Give shout out to all the subscribers. Thank you very much, and to the patrons on Patreon. I have something very cool happening uh, in July. I'll be announcing it, and it is largely due to the patrons on Patreon. If you want to be a patron for as little as a dollar a month, you get some really cool perks, and you also get some patron-only content. Uh, that go to this address, patreoncom forward slash room six. Um, I also want to give a shout out to a huge, staunch supporter of the channel that's on his water bottle. <laughs> Shout out to Scotty Dub. Just hanging out with him last night uh, at, at Pride Day at Chiba Hut. It was awesome. And um, yeah, so I appreciate all, all my guests, but Scotty's really been coming, you know, but going above and beyond. Love you, buddy. So mm-hmm. Scotty's been instrumental in my in my is um, that journey. Is that too. a pun? Instrumental? Instrument. Of course it is. I'm a dad. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> so that's right over there. So how long have you been actually in Vegas? Uh, three years, actually, um, starting at the end of May. Um, you came from Tennessee, right? I actually moved here from Missouri, so I've moved slowly west over <laughs> over the past. Well, I mean, originally though, it was Tennessee. Yes, um, I was I was born in Tennessee, um, lived there for a long time. Uh, my wife and I met in college in Virginia, southwestern Virginia. Oh wow! And then we lived in northeastern Tennessee, which is north of Knoxville. Uh, for about seven years, and then we got. I ended up getting a radio gig in Springfield, Missouri, and so we moved to the middle of the country. Yeah. And then I got the gig here at SOS, and that's what brought us here. Oh, so the, literally being a DJ mm-hmm. brought you to Vegas. Yep. Because I was wondering, how do you go from Tennessee to Vegas? It's a bit of a leap. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a, a gradual thing, and yes. it was a job offer. You're like, yeah, why not? Sure. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Sin City. 
Yep, absolutely. Nice. Um, do you still have your Mickey Muse? My Mickey Muse? Oh, <laughs> I sure do. As a matter of fact, it's in my daughter's bedroom. She has, I think, upwards of 72 Squishmallows. Cool, my yeah, so, I thought my daughter had a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my daughter's definitely in the double digits, but I think it's... I think we're under 30. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have a small fortune in that company, and so... Oh, they're awesome. Kelly Toy, I'm coming after your IPO, okay? <laughs> hey, no no shame on Squishmallows. Yeah. There are literally three in my bed right now. Yeah, they're awesome. They're 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 awesome, awesome. Literally. They're all over our couch, too. Well, so we haven't gone that far. <laughs> not yet, not yet. They are they are strictly for the bed. They're just kind of They're overflowing. strictly for the bedroom. <laughs> hey. Hey, watch out. Yeah, right? So... How long have you been doing music, though? Um, I actually have been doing music since I was about 14. Um, my dad has played music for a long, long time, and he was pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. I just wanted to sing. I, I enjoyed singing. That was that was my thing. Right. And my dad said, you know, you've got to accompany yourself. You've got to learn how to play something. He's like, I don't care if it's piano or banjo or mandolin or whatever, mm -hmm. but I prefer you do guitar. And so he taught me the basic <laughs> chords. Yeah. So he taught me the basic chords. And um, over, over the course of, of time, I taught myself after that. Um, so your basic G, C, and D. And he said, there's a reason they call it the F chord. And he was totally right. Mm. And then after I learned that, I was off to the races. And um, I have always been a rhythm guitarist, though. You know, a, a, a well-used F chord mm -hmm. is a thing of beauty. Indeed. Um, so... From there, I wanted to talk about the uh, the cover band, mm -hmm. Oh Buddy's Terrific, which is a great name, by the way. Thanks. Hard to say, but you know, uh, Jared Kashi. Have you have you ever been in a in a, a just an original music band? Yes, yes. Um, actually, Here in town? Um, no, not in town. Um, throughout my musical playing days, um, so in high school, I started writing music. Um, and I was a part of a band called the Slush Puppies. Nice. And then we found out that that was a copyright, you know, thing. So we were like, eh, okay. Wait, well, you so, didn't know? Well, I mean, we knew that. But at the same time, at the same time, there were a couple other bands that were, mm -hmm. uh, this was like right at the onset of the internet. So we figured it oh, out. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, so we renamed ourselves Exult a Bit. Um, I'm sorry, which, what? Correct. Yes. Which is Excuse actually me? is... Actually, a Latin term for exalting, um, and so it's actually exultabit, and so we we started going with that. Um, we used the the e from the Estes um, moving lines as right. our. It looks like the Flash logo because uh, it's red and yellow, and um, so we did that. And uh, it was it was a little pop punk and a little bit of. Um, Kind of a, what I do now, yeah. acoustic singer songwriter. What's funny about that is if you look to your left on my refrigerator, see that family? Yes. Guess what their last name is? No. Estes. No. <laughs> we awesome. Always, they are not those Estes. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that woman right there yeah. is my wife's sister. So oh, yeah, that's awesome. That's definitely, we're not in that money. No, no. <laughs> uh, so we, you talked about dad real quick. At time of recording, it's almost Father's Day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Cheers to dad. Here's to dads. To being a dad, to having dads. Mm. And like, like me, you're a father and married for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I know what my secret is, but what's your secret? So it's balancing out the music and, and the, cool. the, the the family and the wife and the kids and, and all that jazz. Um, and, and the four dogs. And, and the four dogs. <laughs> and every bit of it. Um, it, it really comes down to... When let, me, let, me, let me back up. Sure. I got engaged. Any tips? Make time for each other. Mm -hmm. Number one, date night is is huge. It's a big deal. It, it doesn't have to be regular, but it does have to happen. Yeah, and on top of that, I would say, um, and this is something that I've learned over time because we we grew up together. Um, truly value your spouse and your partner um, because the moment that you take them for granted is the moment that you check out. Yep. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll go one further. Truly value their need and your need to yeah. sometimes be alone. Yeah, man. You know, uh, my wife and I have a great saying is, 
all right, well, I love you, but I'm going to ignore you now. And the other one will look <laughs> at their phone and be like, okay, because we understand business is done. And we're, we're both like, okay, I got to go edit it yeah. or, or something. And now she's checking out, you know, and, and, and she's reading a book on her phone or playing a game, sometimes both. And at the same time, we both have no problem saying no to each other if something really is a no. And we have no problem saying, hey, we need to talk such such thing and, and get it get it out and get it over with. Definitely get it out. Don't. Yeah, don't uh, mm -hmm. uh, call it a feeling. When did this turn into a relationship thing? <laughs> Back to music. Welcome. So, <laughs> yes. Hi. I'm well, Dr. Well, Fraser Crane. Welcome to this old marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anywho. Uh, you were talking about dads. Can I can I bring up something please. Um, real quick? About it's your interview. Um, so... I share my dad's name. I'm actually the third. Oh, are my, you? My son is the fourth. Wow. Um, there is. Wait, wait, wait. But you, you said your name was Jay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because why would you want to be the fourth? I don't know. Right. He didn't want to be quad. Well, so that, we won't call him quad. <laughs> <laughs> well, junior, 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 you come here right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. None of that. Also, or quad. or JC. To the fourth power. That's awesome. Um, you know, something like that. Well, but, wait a minute. So is your first name actually Jay? No, it's actually John. Oh. Jay is a nickname for that guy right there. Is, so Chalmers the middle name? Chalmers is the middle name. Okay, so you were saying, before before I go hold, down the whole rabbit hole of how'd you get Chalmers, sure. go for it. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I am adopted. Uh, I <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Is he adopted too? No. Okay. No. Because that'd be weird. <laughs> no, no, totally not. But my mom, my sister, and myself all are. And her brother was adopted as well. My mom's brother. Okay, so... so my mom's side is not related by blood at all. But how are you a third if... That's where I was going. Promise. Okay. So, so here's the deal. So my parents couldn't have kids. And they applied for adoption... Um, I was able to be adopted at three months old and my wow. dad passed down his name to me. Despite not being blood related, I still got the name because I'm his son. And that's... Can you legally do that? I guess so, yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't have a name at that time. So, um, so they, uh, they passed down. It's, it's on my birth certificate. It's awesome. So, um, it's really special. Uh, it's really special to me, um. To know that uh, my dad loved me that much, my parents loved me that much to to pass down the name despite not being blood related, and then that is awesome. On top of that, yeah, you want you want me to go down a little bit more of a rabbit hole on the adoption trail here? It's your world. I just live in it. Blood. Okay, all right. Well, here's the deal, um, and this will be subjects of song up, songs upcoming. I've just got to figure out how in the world. Oh, to, you've got great water for sale so, already. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. So, so, um, I was adopted at three months old. Uh, I was brought home on the date of my adopted grandfather's passing like a year later. Um, oh, my, so, so junior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or no, uh, senior, senior. Talk to grandfather. Grand, my grand, my grandfather. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Um, so, John Chalmer, the senior, uh, John Chalmer Harper, the senior, um, passed away a year to the date that I was brought home um, on for my adoption and made it final and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, Forty years passed and never knew who my birth parents were, but my parents were always amazing at telling me that you know adoption is special. We wanted you. We want. We love you. You are ours, no matter what. Right. Um, of course, there's always a, a little bit in the back of your head about like who your birth family is, um, the whole time. But for the most part, because I was loved so well, I didn't. I didn't really go down that road. And my mom never went down that road either. She never went to find her birth family. And so, um, you know, we just we just said, you know. It's fine. You know, if, if it doesn't happen, it's cool. This is what My sister got. was opposite. She really wanted to find her birthday, and she did um, at the age of 19, uh, which was really cool. Um, and they're, they're neat people. Um, and then 
when I turned 40, I decided to take a 23andMe test because I didn't know any of my history, uh -huh. my health history, and we were in a new place. Here we are in Vegas, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take one of these. And I know there's a possibility for anything, you know, when you take one of these. So, um, but I'm going to take it just to see if I'm predisposed to anything. And so I got it back and there was nothing earth shattering at all. There were like a few cousins or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out the second cousin in my list of relatives in my 23andMe saw all the names of the new relatives that had taken the test and he recognized every one of them except for mine. Wow. And he went, this guy looks like us. This is a new branch. This is a new, yeah. Who is this guy? And so he talks to his mom and his mom went, I need to talk to your grandmother. <laughs> so, so she talked to her grandmother, who was my aunt. And my aunt called my birth mom and said, we've got a name. That's and awesome. so, um, and they, there, there's a whole bunch to that. My birth mom had never changed her name. Um, so that she could be found. She wrote me letters years and years and years, and I never got them. Because they, she didn't know who to send them to, right? Well, they, they, they sent them probably to the state. I was a state adoption. So as far as I know, mm -hmm. it's still in my file in Nashville. So wow. uh, it's my adoption oh, file Oh, so you Nashville. still haven't gotten those letters? Mm -mm. Nope. Nope, still haven't gotten them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, bring tissues but, if you ever get the chance. Yeah, <laughs> but with a week, to uh, two years ago, a week before Father's Day, I got an email on a Sunday morning and I looked at my phone and it said, you know, hey, I don't want to upset the apple cart, which is exactly how I felt, you know, throughout these 40 years. Right. Don't want to upset the apple cart, but um, I had a I had a boy in Knoxville and laid out the details and I believe it's you're that guy. It's from your mom. And it was from my birth mom. Wow. Yep. And so she, um, uh, I, I got the email and I walked back into our bedroom and I showed it to my wife and I was like, you got to read this. She's like, well, are you going to do anything? Are you going to like, are you going to write her back? Right. And it took me three and a half hours to do it. So I, I finally did. I mean, this is definitely one of those, we're turning a page in the chapter of my life. Yeah. 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 It was, it was, uh, amazing. And then, um, after I wrote her back, the the first the first line of of her second email was "Welcome to the family." Oh, and so um, we have been connected now. Uh, we met in July at the end of July of 2020 in Amarillo, Texas, which is actually why I have this tattoo here. Oh. Um, this is the logo to the coffee shop where I we met for the first time. I thought that was a, a firebird from a Trans Am. Uh, pretty close, but um, I mean, it's fire chicken for sure. I love fire I love chicken. I love Phoenix. I'll put a picture up, a clo <laughs> closer picture of it. The uh, um, I, I absolutely adore the lore of the Phoenix and the rising from the ashes. It's a, it's a big part of uh, of me. And um, so the logo to the coffee shop, I'm a big coffee snob, as I've said before. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, this is Palace Coffee Company's uh, logo. And I just thought it was fitting to, to do that. And uh, we've been in contact ever since. The relationship is amazing. I've met one of my half-brothers. I've met all of my aunts and uncles now. She was one of six kids. Mm -hmm. um, and um, some cousins um, who I actually have friends in common with. They went to college together. It, it's just a really small world that now seems to get bigger and bigger. It's kind of... Um, Dr. Chalmer and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, no, so, yeah. <laughs> it's a small... Anyway, don't, don't sue me. Um, yeah, the closest I have to that is, is Facebook helped me uh, discover a cousin I didn't know existed. Re okay. reached out to me and lives in Palm Springs. Um, and uh, that was weird. But wow. uh, yeah, no, that's, that's a trip. How did we get here? Wow. <laughs> All right, back to music. Yeah, man. So, um, you... Performing wise, mm -hmm. originals. It's just been you've been performing as, as Chalmer, as yes. yourself. Yeah. What's your best, your favorite show memory? Oh man, yeah. Something oh, that goodness. went like either went really, really weird or went wrong or, or 
check that off my rock star list or whatever. <laughs> I think I think one of my favorites is when I was 16 years old, I was playing in a band um, for church and we we were selected in a what they call the Festival of Gifts and Talents, basically a talent show. Um, and we were selected to go to this youth event which really houses about 10 to 12,000 youth in one place in wow. Gatlinburg. And so we were chosen to represent our district in the um, conference. I'm part of the United Methodist Church, have been for a long, long time. And um, so uh, went to go represent our district there um, in their showcase of talents. And we played one of my songs. I wrote, I wrote the song, and then we played it before about eight thousand people nice as a 16 year old <laughs> so it was you know, that was one of my favorite memories um of all time so that's, that's pretty a, cool it's really special right on uh we're almost done we've got a couple more songs yeah here. no worries uh wanted to say number one thanks for coming on number two you're gonna be stick around by the way he's gonna be performing a few songs up in room six so that's cool uh wanted to talk gear let's talk about your, mm -hmm. your guitar your sure very beautiful guitar thank you it's a luna guitar right luna mm -hmm. and what can you tell me about it um so i i had to have the guitar um, <laughs> I, I saw it on sweetwater um i have you know yep. you know about sweetwater probably yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh everybody knows about sweetwater right you know the the thing i love about uh sweetwater was that they they pair you up with a with a salesperson who kind of knows your needs and um um, kind of fits what you do. Um, but I saw this one on the website. Like, it popped up. Right. Well, it's, and, I mean, it's beautiful. You, get, you see this guitar. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, I don't know <laughs> I don't know if it'll be visible because of the, the restrictions of Room 6, but it's beautiful. It's got, like, a, a phoenix on it. Is that right? It does. It's yes. a phoenix mm -hmm. with Mother of Pearl all there. Mother of Pearl inlay. Oh, God. I can uh, shoot you some photographs. If Please. You like. Thank so, you. Yes. Yeah, so. we'll, get, we'll get that up on screen. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. <laughs> do you, are you, do you care about like what picks you use, what strings you use? Um, picks, yes. Um, I go, go thinner actually um, because I'm not a lead guitarist. Right. Um, I, I never just went down that road. Um, I had friends who were just awesome. So I didn't even worry about it. Right. Um, and um, so I use like a 0 0.6 to a 0 0.72. Um, Dunlops are usually where, where I am. Um, and then strings lately been at the Diodario um, XP, EXPs. Um, They're good strings. And that's, uh, that's what came on the Luna right. when I bought it. Um, and then I just carried on that tradition. But I also have a, a Wechter guitar, um, which he studied as a luthier. He studied under Gibson, and then broke out, did customs, and then he did some other stuff, and nice. then, um, and so I ended up buying one of those and using the Diodarios there as well. Nice. All right. Cool. Uh, last question. You made yeah. it. Hey. <laughs> so, before we get on to the performing, wanted to ask. I normally say something like, "Let's talk to little you, and what do you wish someone had told you before you got into music?" Hmm. But it's always been you. You know, there wasn't really, like, the whole band thing or whatever yeah. uh, for originals. So I wanted to say, I want to ask you instead. If you could change one thing about the local music scene, what mm. would it be? Ooh, man. Wow. Star fight. <laughs> wow, yeah. Um, I, I want to start by saying I'm really, really grateful to the local music scene for making me a part of the community and making me a part of the family. I, here, I here. think that's a, um, that's a beautiful deal. Um, I wish there were more opportunities for original stuff. Um, I, I think, I think the prevailing idea is that nobody wants to hear original stuff. They just want to hear cover stuff that they hear on the radio or right. that they've heard for years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's true. Actually. Yeah, and I think people like House of Art are really pushing that, that yeah. forward of, mm -hmm. you know, here's a ton of original talent yes. that you're going to like because, you know, we're all using the same eight notes, you know? <laughs> yeah. All music is thievery. 
unless you're playing in a Balinese or a Javanese gamelan, <laughs> which has a whole other scale structure, which I have done. Nice. Uh, yeah. Well done. Or a Finnish orchestra or something. We're all using the same notes. It's just like every book that's ever been written uses the same 26 letters. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, it, it, it's hard to be completely unique without being not listenable to. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Agreed. But what would you change? You know, I, I, I think if I could just change the prevailing attitude mm -hmm. um, toward, um, toward original music, um, as a music director of a radio station, I have to work through original music all the time. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It, it's great. Sometimes it's hard <laughs> because yeah. there's a song that you know your audience is going to enjoy and then there's a song that really, really catches your ear and you think there might be something there, but you're not sure if you're going to add it over the over the, the one that you know full well is going to be a hit. Right. Um, and, and so there's there's so much of that. And so I think I think if the prevailing attitude would be, let me take a chance on you. Um, oh, there's one other thing that I would change too. I'm going to say thanks to Vinny's Pizza for, um, for taking a chance on me because when I started here in Las Vegas, I had nothing. Um, I didn't have an Instagram. I didn't have a social media presence except for right. me, yeah. myself, um, my personal page. Um, and he was like, you know, do you have any videos of you playing and performing and, and all of that kind yeah. of stuff? Yeah. And I understand that. Yeah. And I was like... I, I don't. I really don't. Uh, except for like some church videos. Um, and he said, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it anyway. Nice. And and so that that started me and that was enough to push me out of the nest um, to to really start, start that doing first gig, stuff. man. Yeah, man. That, mm -hmm. that, there's so many. It's almost like your first kiss. Yeah. There's so many emotions through yeah. them. Yeah, there's that one and Mike Collins of My Four Sons um, comics and collectibles in Boulder City. Mm. Um, Mike had um, a couple of friends of mine and me play uh, their housewarming when they got to Boulder City. And nice. that was really our first, first anything. It was 104 degrees outside at nine o'clock at night. That sounds very and, familiar. And so, so we were, we were jamming and just playing away. But Mike, Mike from that night, or actually just a little bit before from that night on in particular, he, he's always said, man, somebody's got to hear you. Somebody's got to, oh, you, awesome. you've got to, you've got to do something. And, and so he pushed me toward Vinny, and then the rest is history now. Nice. So, yeah. Well, speaking of hearing you, stick around. We're going to go up to room six, to the guitar wall. John going to play some songs, sing a little ditty, and then we'll see you for the outro. Uh, in the meantime, temporarily say goodbye. See you upstairs. Adios. Hey. This song is called Under the Sun. I was having a conversation with a good friend about a Malcolm Muggeridge quote, which says, all news is old news happening to new people. And so kind of took that into, into heart and then moved on to say, you know what? We can actually make a difference the next time the cycle comes around. And so I wrote this song called Under the Sun. History keeps repeating, yeah, it's all been done. Every single headline I've seen a million times, but we can't keep silent. That's how we change the title. There ain't nothing new under the sun. History keeps repeating, yeah, it's all been done. Every single headline I've seen a million times, but we can't keep silent. That's how we change the title. Well, there's lockdowns and murders. And looting all the stores and Mama's leaving babies And daddy's seeing whores Police going rogue And schools in decline We're blaming each other Just a sign of the times Cause there ain't nothing new Under the sun History keeps repeating Yeah, it's all been done 
every single headline I've seen a million times But we can't keep silent, that's how we change the tide We're living paycheck to paycheck, seven dollar gasoline And Democrats and Republicans in that war in Ukraine Legislate morality and telling us what to do Who to be and who to love, stay out of our bedroom History keeps repeating, that's all been done. Every single headline I've seen a million times, but we can't keep silent. That's how we change the tide. There's a time for birth, a time for death, a time for love, and our time's in this mess. Cause there ain't nothing new under the sun. History keeps repeating, yeah, it's all been done. Every single headline I've seen a million times But we can't keep silent, that's how we change the tide If you stand up, speak out, that's how you change the tide Stand up and speak out, that's how you change the tide Stand up, speak out, that's how you change the tide If you stand up, speak out, you will change the tide This song is called Baby, and if you're a musician, it's actually the acronym for the chord progression in the song, uh, which we had a lot of fun with, um, just snickering, laugh, 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 laugh. But it's actually about um, uh, a love at first sight uh, situation, which is not the situation for my wife and I. We got to know each other over a good long time, but uh, we just thought it would be fun to add some elements uh, of this um, to, or of our story into this very song. So, hope you enjoy.
ships different oceans see it in your eyes something just ain't quite right but for now kept your silence This song is about digging deep when you have to get through a very, very tough circumstance. And it's called Grit. I'm gonna fight, gonna win, ring the bell, let's begin, cause I know I ain't going down. See the fire in my eyes, I'm gonna win the prize, ain't nothing gonna stop me now. Hey! See the fire in my eyes, I'm gonna win the prize, ain't nothing gonna stop me now. Not a straight shot, a goal in it bells coming in hot, I ain't like the rails crashing inside, ain't gonna make the wrong, won't be denied, so here I come, I'm gonna fight, gonna win, ring the bell, let's begin, 
the door ain't going down. See the fire in my eyes, I'm going to win the prize. Ain't nothing going to stop me now. Against all odds, I won't take the fall with all the gods. I'm falling on how gotta dig deep and have no regrets, no defeat. Cause I got that grip. Let's begin, cause I know I ain't going down See the fire in my eyes, I'm gonna win the prize Ain't nothing gonna stop me now So line them up, single file I don't care if it takes a while Line them up, with a knockout punch It ain't gonna take too much I want to thank Chalmer Harbor for dropping by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you'd like to know more about Chalmer, I've got his social media down in the description. Also, there's a link down there for all the social media for Room 6, as well as my email address. If you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using one of those. Also, if you want to support the channel, it will help out the scene and help me make better videos. Pick up some merch at room6.shop or use that social media link for my Patreon or one of my CDs. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it would really make a difference. I'd love you. Just click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Chopper. Goodbye! Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> the cheese! <laughs>